What is up, you guys? This is Willie bringing you another episode of The Town of Light. So where we last left off, we had gone to the slightly agitated ward where Renee's room was located and discovered that Renee had some experimentations done to her. I would say procedures. So we found out more about what happened in her past. And then we noticed that Oh fuck. Okay, so like I said, we noticed that um that uh she's received letters from her mom, but her mom's never received letters from her. Turns out that these people never delivered Renee's letters to her mom. We don't know why. And then we were visited by a mysterious man in our flashback, and we don't remember who this man was, but he was just standing over our bed. Turns out to be Mr. Onofrio, one of a good friend of the mother, Renee's mother. And he brought us a doll, and supposedly Renee lost her old doll, Charlotte. So now we gotta find this new doll, and this is where we're at right now. So we're back, we're here at the archives, about to leave, see if we can find some clues to where this other doll could be at. Let's look for the second doll. It'll be among the bundles of the patient's belongings. Let's look for the other second doll. It'll be among the bundles of the patient's belongings. The archive, right? So it would be here somewhere. Oh, I could do that. Oh, shit. What do you know? Is it this one? Oh, what do you know? Now we can open the bundle on that table in front of the window. That looks like shoes. Oh, that doll right there? I see it. Oh, nope. You see? Mom was good. I was bad. Mom was worried about Renee and Charlotte. I abandoned Charlotte. We've abandoned her. Chapter 10. Now what? That's it? Can I take this doll or what? No. Mm, Charlotte. Oh, we've abandoned Charlotte. I'm scared to go down the hall. I feel like something bad's gonna happen. I don't know if we're supposed to take this doll. Maybe we might need to search it to see what's hiding. No, oh, doesn't look like there's anything. Oh boy. Alright. So I'm assuming we have to go get Charlotte. Let's look for Charlotte. Oh fuck, she we scared the shit out of me. Will she still be where we abandoned her? Under the warm lights? I don't think so. I forgot I have my flashlight. Uh, where did we abandon her? Flashback! What the fuck? What's going on? Oh, I'm in a wheelchair. Where, where are they taking me? Oh god, they're giving me a shot. I didn't, I didn't do, do anything. anything. I just obeyed I orders. I only obeyed orders. Charlotte has gone alone. away. Mom I will didn't come and get us. She loves us. I only Even though obeyed we're orders. Leave us alone. Charlotte I didn't away. do anything. I only obeyed orders. Mom will come and get us. I didn't do anything. I only obey orders, us, even though we're bad. Mom won't leave us alone. I didn't do anything. Charlotte gone away. 
Hey, this place looks familiar. Come and get us now. She loves us. Even we were just in this room. I didn't do anything. I only obeyed orders. God, what happened to her? All this screaming does not help at all. No, we didn't get to see who they are. Oh, it's not over yet. What's going on? What are they doing to me? Those are, that's a nun. Okay, that's a nun. That's a nurse. Oh, they're looking at me. What's the nun doing? What is she doing? What is she doing to me? What is that? <laughs> oh, there's the doctor. Oh, they're doing electro shock therapy. They're doing electro shock therapy. Electric shock therapy. Yep. Yep, no, nope. fuck you, fuck you. Don't do it. Don't you press that button. Don't you press that button. Don't you press it. Don't you press it. Don't you press it. Oh shit. You pressed it. Chapter 11 September 7th, 1938 the patient frequently indulges in recriminations expressed in an explosive tone of voice. This morning she threw away the milk, saying it was full of urine, spittle, and all kinds of other filth. Crazed, she hears voices that order her to do things. She says she heard children singing and that they were locked up in a school. January 20th, 1939. Introverted, dazed, cannot focus on anything. When questioned and stimulated, she starts crying and weeping. At other times, she laughs. June 1st, apathetic, eats very little. She refuses to be touched, does not respond. Spends her time in the grounds. The cooks report that she sits on a bench in front of the kitchens. October 14th, return of impulsive behavior. This morning, she asked for two eggs to make tzabayoni, but when she got them, she threw them up in the air. Excited, clamorous, slightly confused, takes her clothes off. December 8th, tied to bed for 15 days. High-spirited, tends to make witty comments and use vulgar words. Laughs hysterically and pleasures herself. The nurses report that about two weeks ago she remained in the showers on her own and didn't want to leave. They said that when they took her away she swore at them and then lashed out and bit them. Two nurses had to be treated for their injuries. They've kept her tied to the bed since then. Transferred to the slightly agitated ward. 
from the care of Dr. B to the care of Dr. C. Huh. I was with Amara in the showers. My memories are terrifying. They're not real, are they? Mm, yeah, they're just figment of my imagination. What, rea what reality are we referring to? Memory is what you are, whether it's real or not. So yeah, so I was with the Mara in the showers. My memories are terrifying. They're not real, are they? Yeah, they're just figment of my imaginations. What reality we are are we referring to? I'm gonna say memory is what you are. Memory is what you are, whether it's real or not. December 15th, Dr. C. Patient notes. The abnormality of her psychic state has induced her to lead a life which is irregular and tends towards delinquency. Of fickle and flighty character, she regularly discards her household duties and engages in occasional prostitution. Delinquency? Prostitution? Renee? It seems so strange, unreal. It can't be true. And Amara? She loved us and would tell us everything. She wouldn't hide anything from us. Her mental deficiency makes her deaf to the reprimands of her family. She has shown suicidal tendencies. She was brought to the ward yesterday, agitated and hysterical. Treated with cardiazole, two injections a week for five weeks. They were only trying to confuse us with the therapy, and my god, they succeeded. It was as if they wanted to instill the madness into us. It was the only treatment they could try. There were so many of you, what could they do to manage the hell? That hell when there were so few of them. The ends always justify the means for those who wield power. So the ends always justify when the means for those who wield power. So they were only trying to confuse us with that with the therapy and my god they succeeded. It was as if they wanted to instill the madness into us. It was only the treatment they could find. There were so many of you, what could they do to manage that hell when there was so few of them? The ends always destroy the means before those who wield power. I must say it was only a treatment they could try. Yeah! It was torture, but we had no choice. Nobody explained anything. No one tried to help us understand. We were like farm animals. It was torture, but we had no choice. Nobody explained anything. No one tried to help us understand. We were like farm animals. You were too many and there were too few. It was impossible to do otherwise. They also had their nightmares within these walls. They didn't know what to do with you. They didn't know what to do with you. That, that, that could be true. You were damned dangerous condemned soul. Who could have taken care of you? I want to say B. Fuck. <laughs> June 2nd. After a long period of calm and improvement, the patient is very agitated today and vehemently refuses to submit to a gynecological examination. She swears and curses those helping her, flailing her arms and hitting them. According to reports by Dr. B, the patient has been subjected to periodic checkups since she had a spontaneous abortion about two years ago in her third month of pregnancy. So she was pregnant, Renee was she pregnant. Heard after she had sexual intercourse with a stranger who sneaked into the hospital grounds. Oh! Details are contained in the charges filed at police headquarters in Volterra, a copy of which is attached to these clinical notes. ES therapy. A spontaneous abortion? It's not true. I can't believe it. How could I have invented things if I didn't even know what they were doing to me? It really happened. They made you have an abortion, but it was illegal, and so they reported it as a random acts incident. That's a lie. What is written here might be false or just the wrong way of looking at things. Perhaps Renee really did know. You can't be sure of it. You know what that, don't you? <sighs> Man, that's hard. A spontaneous abortion. It's not true. I can't believe it. How could I invent things if I didn't even know what they were doing to me? It really happened. They made you have an abortion, but it was illegal, and so they reported it as a random incident. I don't think. 
I don't think asylums would randomly, they would make you have an abortion if you were pregnant, even though you were deemed mentally ill. Uh, A or C. I'm going to have to go with either A or C. I think grenades in denial right now, so I'm going to go C. Yeah, fuck. June 13th. The nurses report that she descended into a state of great mental confusion after receiving her mother's letter. She threw her soup over another inmate because she was very anxious and then punched a nurse. Impulsive flails about her. She rails against the doctor in vulgar terms while he is examining her, lashes out and spits. Block all correspondence to give the patient no further reason to become agitated. August 20th, tied to bed. The nurses report that the patient is extremely agitated after the visit of a relative or family friend. Two days later, she is still shouting all the time that he commands her, that she must obey and harm herself, and that she is not Charlotte. All visits forbidden, constrained to bed, and intensification of ES therapy until we achieve results. No contact with the outside. That way nobody knew what was happening within these walls. Human misery was thrown in here and locked away to make the world forget about it. The people who were in here were no longer human beings as far as society was concerned. The important thing is was to keep you quiet. You don't remember what happened when the letters arrived. How can you judge? God knows how much suffering they spared you. You don't remember what happened when the letters arrived. How can so no contact with the outside, the way nobody knew that was happening within these walls. No contact with the outside. Ha! Ah, human misery was thrown in here and locked away to make the world forget about it. The people who were in here were no longer human beings. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. God, hey. Woo! March 3rd. Alert, correct attitude, replies when questioned. The nurses report that the patient is calm. She washes and looks after herself. She affirms the existence of a certain Amara. She says that Amara is a patient who disappeared when she was moved to this ward. No confirmation. Probably a regressive hallucination. Evaluate transfer. Did I imagine Amara? That's not possible. She was there. I know she was there. I feel it. She must have left some traces of her presence. Interesting. So there's a possibility she imagined all of this. She imagined Amara. Huh. We can look for her things in the storeroom, containing the bundles of the patient's belongings, on the upper floor. Why the music play? What's going on? So we can look for her things in the storeroom. What the fuck is that noise? Did I turn the lights on? Oh. What happened to, um... Okay, not important right now. Uh... We can look for things in the storeroom containing the bundles of the patients belonging on the floor. I'm assuming the archives.
We can look for your things in the storeroom containing because you belong on the upper floor. Is that it? These are Amara's things, I'm certain. Amara, there she is. She existed. She really did exist. There she is, my friend. Here we are together. How could I have imagined for a single moment that she never existed? March 12th, 1938. The young girl Renee arrived today. Poor thing, she was terrorized. You see, she remembers the first time we met. I talked to her mother, the dear lady, and she expressed her fears to me and I promised I'd keep an eye on her daughter. The lady told me her daughter's doll had been taken away and this worried her because when she becomes depressed as she is now, Renee barricades herself in her room and can't communicate. The doll becomes her voice, eyes, and ears. Dr. B said I'll soon get out of here. I'm sorry. I'm so sad to leave Renee. I won't be able to protect her anymore. My poor friend. She was hoping to be able to get out of here, but nobody ever leaves this place. That poor girl is really ill. I am the only one she ever speaks to. I told her I was leaving and she stared at me, saying that I would never leave. It was quite unnerving, and then she started to cry. I felt like crying too. She didn't say anything else. What worries me is that I'm sure that terrible man is watching her. He was the one who brought her here, and of all the good people, why did it have to be him? She knew. I told her everything. She knew about that man. But I instructed a nurse friend of mine to keep an eye on her, and I'm sure she will, because she's a good woman. Her friend the nurse. I vaguely remember. She worked on this ward. Okay, who's the mysterious man, though? Are we talking about the doctor, or what? Let's look for signs of the nurse in the nurse's room on the upper floor. Hmm, nurse's room in the upper floor. Where's the nurse's room at? Is it over here? Just kidding. These chimes, though. Wow, this helps a lot. Thirteen. Oh, it's right here. I'm assuming it's this one because can't play this. She worked mostly in the Maragliano Pavilion. Let's get out of here and find that pavilion. Renee was alone here. Charlotte had abandoned her. And without Charlotte, Renee couldn't communicate with the outside world. Mother knew that. So, Marilyn was a different pavilion nearby. Let's follow the signs. Different pavilion nearby. Let's follow the signs. What signs? Yeah. Oh, look, medical records. So she worked mostly in the Mer, Mer in the Merligan pavilion. Let's get out of here. Oh, Mer. Okay, that's what the room's called. All right, let's quickly go over there then. Uh, 
I don't see it. Maybe it's downstairs? It's starting to get dark. I'm gonna assume it's downstairs. Which would make sense, because remember this is that sign that's right here? Just kidding. Ba-ba! What signs am I supposed to follow? Marilla Gloom was a different pavilion nearby. What's a pavilion? I don't know if I'm supposed to come out here. I'm not too sure. I kind of don't know where I'm supposed to go. But uh, I think I'm going to have to most likely end it here for now. But we did find a lot of interesting things. Um, we did a lot of interacting. Still don't know why Renee's talking third person. Like I said, my suggest my suggestion is is that we're Charlotte. Charlotte's taking over Renee's mind. I don't know. Maybe this game's getting more crazy and crazier every time we play it. Um, it's messing with my mind, but I enjoy this game a lot. Well, if you guys enjoy watching this video, please leave a like on my YouTube channel and leave an upvote on my VidMe channel. And always subscribe to my channels for more content like this. Just thank you guys, thank you guys for watching my video, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.